Good day students. Today we shall look into the physics of solids, in particular crystals. We have pictures of the structures of different solids in the nanoscales and in the microscales and milliscales. Here we have gallium arsenide structure, gallium phosphide structures, etc. Again here we see different shapes. Here we have spike structures, we have tubular structures, right? We have uh, spherical sort of structures here and all these structures happen to define different properties of these solids. They can define its electrical conductivity, its thermal conductivity, its specific heat, its magnetic properties, and also its optical properties. So, it is of prime importance to learn about the internal structure of solids. Now, solids, they can take up different shapes and all of this depends upon how the atoms are distributed within its lattice. And the study of the structure of solids is called solid state physics. Now, classically we have learned that the different states of matter are solid, liquid, gas and plasma. In this, the solids are further classified into crystalline and non-crystalline solids. Let us look into the properties of these crystalline and non-crystalline solids. Crystalline solids can be single crystals and polycrystalline solids. Now, they have periodic arrangement of atoms or molecules in it. They have a definite geometrical pattern. They have a long range order, that is, the distribution of atoms periodically, the repetitive manner is over a long range, over a larger distance. It has a sharp melting point since all the bonds between the atoms and molecules, all the bond lengths are equal. At a particular temperature, all the bonds can dissociate. And they show an isotropic nature. That is, they have different properties along different orientation of the crystals. Now, in non-crystalline solids or amorphous solids, the atoms or molecules don't have any definite distribution within that structure. The picture here shows that. So here, we have irregular arrangement of atoms or molecules. And it does not have any definite geometrical pattern. They show short range order. And these materials do not have a sharp melting point. Moreover, they are isotropic behavior. That is, they have similar properties along all orientations of the solid. Now, based on the size of the ordered regions within the material, the solids are classified into single crystals like diamond, quartz, mica, here all the atoms or molecules are periodically arranged over a long range. The next classification is polycrystalline solids, that is metals or ceramics. Here the periodicity is only over a few dimensions, that is only certain regions show periodicity. Again, these have a long range order, but it forms certain grains. And the periodicity is disrupted at the grain boundary. Now, the grain boundaries are of importance because that determines many of the properties of that material. The next classification is the amorphous solids like glass, 
plastics, rubbers, cement, and paraffin wax. It does not have any periodic arrangement or regular arrangement of atoms. Now, these pictures are a few of the crystals that are formed in nature. Now, to learn about this crystal structure, we should know first and foremost about lattice. Now, today's lattice is the totality of a large number of imaginary points in three-dimensional space. So, we have to imagine a lot of points that are equally spaced in three-dimensional space. Now, around each point, we have identical surroundings. And all the points in this lattice can be reached using a particular vector called translation vector. It is defined as translation vector T is equal to N1A plus N2B plus N3C, where ABC are the fundamental translation vectors and N1, N2, N3 are integers. So, to move from one point in the lattice to another point, we just need to translate using this translation vector. Now, one dimensional lattice is represented by these points along one dimension. The two dimensional lattice can be represented by this array of points along two dimensions. Another type of two dimensional lattice is as this. Again, here also we have repetitive distribution of points in a different manner. Now, three-dimensional lattice is the distribution of points in three dimensions. In all these lattices, it is of importance to note that each of the lattice points will have identical surroundings. So, whenever we look into that lattice, or if you stand at a point within the lattice and we look anywhere around it, our surroundings will be identical. Now, let's say we have a lattice of this type and we have this blue point as our initial position and the red point as our final position. Now, to move from this blue point to this red point, we can use the translation vector. And here we define two fundamental vectors A and B. So, using these fundamental vectors, I can define the translation vector as 2 times A, okay, 2 times A plus 3 times B. Okay. Now, in this type of lattice again, to move from this blue point to the red point, I can also define the fundamental vectors in this manner. So, B is a vector along this direction and A is a vector along this direction. Now, to define the movement from the blue point to the red point, I am going to write the translation vector as T is equal to A plus B. So, from here we understand that the fundamental translation vectors A, B, C, they are not unique. They can be different in different lattices. Now here, let us see in particular the lattice of graphene. Graphene has a honeycomb structure. Now, to check whether this graphene shows a brevet lattice, now, let us assume different points in it. Let us assume these three points represented in red, green and blue. In order for this lattice to be a brevet lattice, it should follow the condition that all the points surrounding it should be identical and each point can be achieved by means of a translation factor. So, here, if we take the red point alone, the identical points around red can be represented as such. Now, if we take the green point alone, the identical points around the green point will be like this. And if we take the blue point alone, the identical points around the blue point will be like this. 
if we try to overlap all these identical neighbors, we have the distribution of the red neighbors like this. We have the distribution of the blue neighbors like this. So it is identical. The neighborhood is identical. Whereas the distribution of the green neighbors is like this. It is inverted. So from here, we understand that this honeycomb structure of the field is not a Bravé lattice. So this lattice is defined in such a way that it should be identical in all orientation of the crystal. Now the next term that we should learn is about the basis. The basis is an atom or a group of atoms placed at a lattice point and it will be identical in composition, arrangement and orientation. So this will be identically placed in all the lattice points. So here if we have a lattice of this sort and on all the lattice points we place a basis like this, a single green atom, we get this structure. Similarly, if we have a lattice of this sort and we place a basis, here the basis is the group of three red atoms and a single blue atom. If this group of atoms is placed on all the lattice points, we get a distribution like this. So from here we can understand that the crystal structure is basically space lattice plus basis. The crystal structure shows the different atomic arrangements in the crystal and in it the periodicity will vary in different directions. So for a one dimensional crystal we can see the distribution of atom or a group of atoms like this. In a three dimensional case that is for iron here the atoms are distributed in the lattice as such. The iron atoms are placed on the lattice points. In sodium chloride crystal, we see the sodium ions and the chlorine ions that are alternatively placed on the lattice points. Now, if we have a crystal, you know that it has a periodic arrangement of atoms with it. So if we try to cut that crystal, cut that crystal, cut that crystal, so that it maintains its periodicity, and finally we achieve a part, the smallest unit that has the similar properties of that whole crystal. And that is called the unit cell of that crystal structure. It is the fundamental grouping of the particles in the crystal which will repeat it along all the dimensions it forms the crystal. Now this unit cell represents the symmetry of that crystal. By translating the unit cell along the edges, we can achieve the crystal. But here, let us see, by making use of that single cubic unit cell, by placing it periodically along the edges, and continually growing it along the three dimensions, we can achieve a bigger six-sided cubic crystal or we can also achieve a 14-sided crystal. That is the beauty of nature. So from a single cubic unit cell, we are able to achieve two types of crystals having different shapes. Now to understand the unit cell, it is described by lattice parameters that are the lattice vectors A, B, C along the X, Y, Z coordinates and the interfacial angles between these axes alpha, beta and gamma. So the length of the unit cell along the X axis is A, length of the unit cell along Y axis is B and length of the unit cell along along the z-axis is C. The angle between the x and y-axis is called alpha. The angle between the y and z 
axis is called beta and the angle between the x and z axis is called gamma. These six parameters are called the lattice parameters. Now, based on the different values of these lattice parameters, Breve successfully classified the crystals into seven basic crystal systems and he identified these crystals to have 14 Breve lattices. The peculiarity of these Breve lattices was that they show symmetry upon many symmetry operations. If the lattice was rotated or reflected or interchanged, all these lattices, all these 14 Breve lattices were invariant. Now, what do you mean by a primitive set? The minimum volume or area which when translated across the lattice, it will cover the entire lattice. So it is a type of unit set. Okay, but the peculiarity here is this unit cell has only one lattice point per primitive set. This means that the unit cells can have more than one lattice points. We shall look into it later. Now the volume of this primitive cell is A dot B cross C. And the area of the primitive cell is A cross B. Where A, B, C are the lattice vectors of the unit cell. That's all for today's session. Thank you.